going to look at the glass transition temperature yet again. And today we're going to think about the kinetics of the glass transition temperature and specifically uh, the effect of cooling rate, cooling rate on TEG and essentially this idea and how it connects to percolation theory. So uh, if I think if you're a physicist or maybe a or mathematician or a computer scientist, um, you may have heard of percolation theory, but if not, it doesn't matter. We're going to get into it today. So the glass transition temperature, as we've kind of mentioned um, briefly, is dependent on the rate of cooling uh, of your sample. So, uh, oops, excuse me, I'm flipping my screen here. Um, <laughs> uh, and the cooling rate dependence uh, is can, uh, basically can be explained by this idea and visualized by percolation theory. So let's imagine our polymer and our old friend, we're finally coming back to it. Uh, let me erase this guy. Here, let's imagine that we have our polymer and it's on a lattice, just like in our old good days of Florey Huggins theory. So I'm going to draw one lattice here. The idea of um, so if you imagine that we have again this polymer on this kind of this type of lattice, um, you can imagine that each lattice point here. So if I'm sitting on a lattice point, each lattice point can be either in a glassy state, so G, or in a fluidy state, F. Uh, so and the entire network is considered to be percolated or a connected, um, or you know, a material uh, will be in a glassy or fluidy state. But once we uh, once we form a connected network of points on our lattice, i.e., once I can kind of draw something like this, that kind of spans the entire lattice. So not every point has to be a glass uh, in order to our material to be uh, our polymer sample to be glassy. Instead, this percolation theory uh, kind of uh, postulates that the network is considered percolated when a connected network of glassy points spans the entire lattice. So once I can draw, once I know that this point, this point, this point, this point, this point, once I know all these points are G, instead of, I'm going to change my notation here. So I could be either glassy or I could be a fluid. So I don't need every single point on this lattice to be a G, uh, a glass, a glassy point in order for my uh, polymer sample to be considered uh, in the glassy state. Similarly, I don't need every uh, point to be fluid to be in the fluidy state, but or actually, but forget about that for a second. So to become a glass, we just need kind of this connective network that spans our lattice. So uh, that's kind of the key idea here. So uh, and then again, these connections cut off. And the idea is again, the, on a macro scale, our material will behave like a glass because we're cutting off essentially. Um, the fluid points from here and here from you know behaving and moving collectively. So once we can span this entire network as kind of glassy points, we're a glass. Uh, and physically, uh, and again, there's some probability essentially, uh, each lattice point uh, goes through some probability of this kind of transition. So at each lattice point, we can go from, there's some probability of going from a liquid to a glass. And similarly, probability of going from a glass to a liquid. Uh, so uh, there's basically, you know, we can kind of see this uh, moving on here. Physically, this is uh, this kind of concept is reflecting the ability of the monomers to move through available free volume. So at lower temperatures, so if my temperature is low, and actually I'm going to keep this consistent. I'm gonna draw the here. E G liquid liquid. So if my temperature, my temperature here, I'm going to draw this. If my temperature is very, very low, where are my points going to want to be? In a, in a liquid state or a glassy state? So which is the probability? Are more points going to go from liquid to glass or glass to liquid? Well, again, uh, if I have at lower temperatures, the probability of a fluid to glass transition will, inc uh, will increase. So this is going to be more probable at lower temperatures. And then here, this probability is going to decrease at lower temperatures. So we're going to increase at low temperatures, probability for glass to fluid, uh, or from a fluid to glass will increase, the probability from gla glass to fluid will decrease. And that kind of makes sense. Why? Because there's decreasing free volume, so that's going to favor this glassy transition. So we want to go to G, the glassy state. Uh, additionally, as we cool, the probability of forming a glass becomes higher. And the time that it takes for glass points to go to fluid so this transition, the time to go from a glass, actually, let me this in, the time it takes, excuse me, time for a 
glass to a fluid or a liquid transition, that is going to uh, be much, 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 much longer. So this is going to take more time as our temperature decreases or as we cool. So that time is going to uh, increase as we cool. So again, this is all basically saying as we cool, this transition, this probability, the time that we go from liquid to glass is going to be much, much shorter. This is going to be more probable than this transition here. So let's think now, uh, what happens if we cool at a very fast rate? Well, if we cool at a very fast uh, rate, uh, again, what's the time here? This, this transition from a glass to liquid is going to take very, very long as we cool. Uh, so the lattice points are going to be able to transition from uh, basically a fluid, a liquid to a glass right here. So we can make this transition because at low temperatures or as we cool here, I know that my, excuse me, sorry for all the notations, but my liquid to glass or my, like actually, excuse me, my glass to liquid transition is going to be much, much longer or larger. Excuse me. Let's erase that right here. It's going to be greater than my temperature or the time to go from a liquid to glass. What does this mean? Well, it just means that, again, shorter time, it's going to be easier, more probabilistic, whatever you want to kind of think about it in times or probabilities, but I'm going to transition more, uh, more of my liquid points are going to transition to glass, uh, and they're not going to go back as quickly. Why? Because it takes this longer time um, for the glass to fluid transitions. So if you cool fast, you're going to quickly form this percolated network. Why? Because this time is so much uh, longer than this time, so there's going to be more points, more probabilistic. You're more likely going to kind of create this, uh, this network quickly. So the result is, as you cool quickly, you're going to see fast cooling, a glass transition temperature, this percolating network, appear sooner in terms of temperature. Now, what happens if we cool slowly? So high temperatures, again, it'll be rain, blah, 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 blah. Um, if we cool a slower rate, what's happening here? Well, if we cool slowly, we're not getting into kind of those low temperatures as quickly. So since we're still saying if our cooling rate is slow, we're spending more time, so there's more time at higher temperatures. As we increase temperature, as temperature increases, what's the more probabilistic transition? Well, the more probabilistic transition is going to be from a glassy state to a liquid state. Sorry. So it's want to go. It's it's going to want to go back to liquid. So uh, at higher temperatures, this short uh, time associated with the glass uh, again higher temperatures again you have a similar relationship. The time for this glass to liquid transition is going to be much less than my time for my liquid to excuse me liquid to glass transition. So what that means is essentially this higher temperatures, this kind of transition back from liquid to glass and glass to liquid, even as you cool because of these higher temperatures, the short time associated with this glass to fluid transition right here, uh, it's going to disrupt this network. Even though you're cooling and more, uh, again, it's more probable to form from a liquid to glass, because you're staying at these higher temperatures for longer times, you can disrupt this network. And so overall, you're going to see this glass transition uh, at a much, much lower, at a lower temperature. Um, and actually, we did this uh, last semester, when, unfortunately, when we were, well, when we were still able to kind of do lab experiments. Um, you could actually see this uh, in the DSC. And actually, we'll show an example. Um, if I could, hopefully, I could pull it up. Uh, but it was an, a very, very, you know, really, really cool experiment uh, that we accidentally did. So uh, that is a fun example. And we'll look at that um, hopefully in class or in an initial video. So. That's this kind of key idea again. So slower cooling, glass transition temperature at lower temperatures. Fast cooling, uh, glass transition glass transition at higher temperatures. So next time we're going to get into TG and uh, how it relates to kind of the chemical structure of monomers. And this will be a, a really really kind of fun section uh, and lead to some uh, of our kind of experimental techniques. And uh, this will much uh, this will be very likely to show up on problem sets and exams. So. Hopefully in the next video, you really uh, can 
kind of appreciate it and nail uh, this kind of topic. So I'll see you all next. Thanks. Bye.